What's up, you beautiful person, and welcome back. It's your boy Micah. You know what we do here. We talk tips and perspectives so that you can live freely in reality. Today, I want to give you the final update on my thoughts and experiences that I've had with Dr. Rumor and her office. This has now been about a year that I've been dealing with her office, and I kind of want to give you guys my final conclusion on what my thoughts are and what my goals and what my steps going forward into the new year are going to be for me to actually get bottom surgery. So I want to share some experiences experiences that I personally have with her office and I'm also going to share some stories that I've heard within our community from actually someone who reached out to me as they are a therapist within the Philadelphia area and had a lot of uh, information to give me and the reason why I want to talk about this is because for those of you who are living in Pennsylvania and are looking to have surgery and it's kind of a little bit of a monopoly here in, in Pennsylvania, specifically in the phalloplasty realm. There's really only two doctors within Pennsylvania, which is Dr. Sherman Lees and Dr. Rumor, who perform phalloplasty. And so I wanna be able to give some honest conversation as not as a means to hurt anyone, disrespect anyone or hurt anyone's feelings or whatever the case may be. This is in an effort to keep our community safe I truly believe that it is our duty or my duty um, and my responsibility to share the things that I know and find out within our community and with my own personal experience in order in an effort to keep other individuals within the community safe. And that's my main goal, okay? And as well as give you information. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Before I get into all of the specifics, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all of you in the real fam who have subscribed, who like my content, support the content and all that good and fun stuff. I really appreciate it. Like I said, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. If you like content like this, give me a big thumbs up so I know to continue to make content like this for you, okay? I love you guys. Let's get into the video. So a little quick backstory for those of you who don't know me or have never seen my content. I had a consultation with Dr. Rumor, uh, Dr. Kathy Rumor, who is in Ardmore, Pennsylvania, and I had that consultation literally a year ago. And in that consultation, which you can watch my other video to get more in details about the consultation somewhere up here, I'll link it. But just like a quick context here, everything kind of went well in the consultation. I personally didn't get any bad vibes from Dr. Rumor. I felt that she was very direct to the point and was giving me all the information that I asked for and that I needed. Now, after receipt, having my consultation, which I was also told within the consultation that I was at a good weight, I was at a good height, everything was gonna be great, so on and so forth. Fast forward into when I had my pre-op appointment, and this is where I'm gonna start sharing some of my experiences on what happened and what changed my mind on me not wanting to any longer go to Dr. Rumor. Fast forward into my pre-op appointment, I'm su you're supposed to get a packet or something detailing what you're supposed to do, the instructions essentially leading up to you having bottom surgery, okay? I never received that packet. I never got one in the mail. I never got one in email. There was multiple ways I could have received this packet. I never got one. I took the day off of work and had a phone call, pre-op appointment. And during that pre-op appointment, the nurse who called me, she essentially was like, okay, well, go ahead and go to your packet. And I'm like, I don't have one. So she's like, okay, well, you don't need it. I'll just go over it with you. And so she's like, okay, so, as you know, you're gonna need to, I can't even remember what it was that she said I needed to do. Uh, but she started saying that I needed to do all of these things and I was like, okay, okay, like kind of slow down so I can write this down. She's like, well, you don't have a packet? I'm like, yeah, I just told you that. Okay, well, we're not gonna be able to go forward with this pre-op appointment then because you need this packet in order to be on the same page and I don't wanna like go too slow and I don't wanna go too fast. And it was a, it was a whole mess. And so she was like, I'm gonna hang up with you. I'm gonna have them email you the, pa the copy of this packet and then we're gonna have to reschedule for you to have this pre-op appointment. Which at first I was a little pissed off about because I had took the day off of work, you know, I lost money to do that. And like, you're not even prepared for this consultation or this pre-op appointment that has been scheduled for months at this point. So I wait and I wait and I wait for about a week, two weeks, three weeks come, I still have not gotten this packet, no phone call, no nothing. I reach out to them, hey, I have not received the packet, what are we doing in terms of this pre-op appointment, so on and so forth. They said, well, it actually has to be written up by a supervisor for you for you to have this packet. Why wasn't it already done? That was kind of a red flag for me, but I, I kind of let it go. A few weeks later, or I, probably like an, about a month or so later, now we're in like almost October, okay? And mind you, I'm sorry, we were in probably September, uh, somewhere around there, August or September. Mind you, at this point, my surgery is scheduled for October. 
in October 12th and I have not had my pre-op appointment. I have no packet. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing in order to prepare for my surgery, which side note, I forgot to mention within my pre-op appointment, I'm now told I'm overweight and need to lose 20 pounds in essentially two months or 20, it was like 20, 22 pounds, which was like, okay, whatever. Um, I'll do what I got to do. So now fast forward, we're in, we're in September and I get a phone call from Dr. Rumor's office telling me that I no longer have insurance. What is my updated insurance? I was not aware that I no longer had insurance. That's when I had to deal with a whole lot of other stuff, which you can see in one of my other blogs about bottom surgery. And so I had to go through all these hoops to try to get insurance and everything like that. Now, after that conversation, I get another phone call from the nurse, the same nurse who I was supposed to have my pre-op appointment with. She essentially tells me, so yeah, have you started electrolysis? What's going on? So on and so forth. Electrolysis for what? I'm not having urethral lengthening. She goes, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I see that now in your chart. Why aren't you verifying this before you're contacting me and asking me these questions? Um, this was another red flag for me. The one that really sealed the deal of letting me know I don't want to go to this office was when I got an email from the same nurse who sends me a prescription in the email for a, a medication, like an antibiotic, that I'm allergic to. This is in my charts. This is in everywhere I go medically, okay? I'm allergic to sulfur drugs. I will have an anaphylactic shock. It will literally kill me, okay? It can kill me. She sent me a antibiotic, which she told me I was supposed to take prior to surgery for X amount of time before surgery. And I said, I cannot take this medication. I'm allergic to it. Is that not in my chart? She emails me back. Oh yeah, you're right. I see that now. I'll find something else that you can take. That to me was the nail in the coffin that I cannot trust this office and I cannot go through with surgery. I'm not saying that all the people who have had experiences with her, like who have had surgery with her is in bad shape. I've talked to two people personally who had surgery with her, showed me their, their phallus. I mean, they were very happy with what they received and all of that. But to me, this was all red flags. What if I had been put under and you were to already give me something that would have literally killed me and I am not conscious to speak for myself? And it took for me to say something for you. Oh yeah, now I see that. Which mind you, every time I spoke to this nurse, it was like something had changed, whether it had been urethral lengthening, uh, burying my T-dick. I mean, it was like all over the map. Like nobody knew what it was that I was supposed to be getting done. And throughout this entire time, I would try to call and ask questions and get things. It was like nobody was getting back to me until it became about money and insurance. Fast forward, I get a message from one of our real fam uh, who I said is a therapist in Philadelphia. And he's like, hey, I don't know if you had surgery yet. If you did, I hope everything went well. If not, I need to talk to you if you're willing and open to what I have to say, because I don't think this is gonna be a good route for you. I called him up, we had a conversation, and he, he proceeded to explain to me how this was the norm with her office, and that he had extensive experience with clients who he couldn't tell me much because of their the, the client privacy but he told me enough that scared the shit out of me, okay? I mean, with guys who have had surgery and then no longer had care after follow-up care, had complications, did not get follow-up care, was treated poorly, um, and kind of the same, a lot of these same scenarios that I dealt with just with their office, okay? And, 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 and so, to the point that this gentleman told me that they no longer even refer people to her office because they don't feel like safe doing so. They don't feel that the community would be safe. And so that was a big one for me. And so where does that leave me now? I live in Pennsylvania. New York City is about three and a half hours from me. Maryland is probably two and a half hours from me, so it's not too bad. Um, and my options are so limited just where I live. I would have to travel somewhere else to have bottom surgery. And so this is what brings me to my plans. I'm looking at Dr. Blue Bond Lagner who's in New York City. I'm hoping to schedule a consultation with her as soon as I get insurance for my new job because I'm supposed to have really good insurance with them. So I'm looking to schedule a consultation with Dr. Bluebon Lagner and I'm also debating on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Sherman Lease because Dr. Sherman Lease is in, is in Philadelphia and it's a little bit of a better commute for me versus going all the way to New York City. So my plans are I'm going to keep positive. I'm going to be looking at different surgeons. I'm going to actually be recording my consultations so that you can I can share them with you all and you can make, you know, better decisions on, you know, who you might vibe with and who you won't vibe with. If you have questions that you would like answered, let me know in the comments because then 
when I have these consultations, I can ask those questions for you as best as I can, of course, and, and get some information back to you guys. The reason for this video, like I said, is a lot of people had been asking me about my bottom surgery. A lot of people had things to say about Dr. Rumor, and I'm. it's not that I did not believe people. It's not that I wanted to invalidate anyone who was telling me their experiences. I'm just the type of person I like to see for myself what I'm dealing with because in some situations, it's like, okay, is it your, was it your expectation that was let down? Was it a serious medical complication? Like, what was the issue? And a lot of times, the people I heard things from when it came to Dr. Rumor's office had not had personal experiences. It was kind of whispered down the lane. Well, I knew this person who knew this person who told me that this happened. And then so lot, lines get crossed and things get skewed and you're not really sure what to believe anymore. And so for me to have these experiences personally with the office, really, really made me sit back and think, well, maybe it was a good thing that my insurance got canceled and I wasn't able to have surgery with her office. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm now, like I said, I'm not, I'm no longer thinking about going to Dr. Rumor. I'm thinking about now what are my other options that's going to be financially feasible and it's going to be a good option for me that I'm not going to be, you know, seriously injured or hurt within the process. Because again, if your nurses don't even read the charts before dealing with a patient, that's concerning. Um, and they didn't really seem to be concerned when I was like, I can't take this or this is an issue, so on and so forth. So anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this video. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments if you have questions or concerns. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you guys. Peace.